Right friends, welcome back to lecture part. This is 50th week from 7th to 13th December. Let us look at the highlights. Historic climate deal was struck at Paris, though legally not enforceable, but 196 countries came to the conclusion. Second important point is Shinzo Abe's visit to India. For the third time he visited India and lot of defense cooperation and almost a nod for civil nuclear deal these things were struck and most important is bullet train project between Mumbai and Ahmedabad was formulated then India and Pakistan to start a comprehensive bilateral dialogue then important cabinet decisions shipbuilding industry will get infrastructure status not only that procurement of pulses will be done by utilizing price stabilization fund to control the prices of pulses. Supreme Court ratifies Haryana's Panchayat law and there are several questions unanswered. Then we are going to discuss about Chennai's structural problems, what went wrong with Chennai. Then if you look at the world events, at last groundbreaking ceremony for Tapi pipeline, our Vice President Hamid Ansari visited the groundbreaking ceremony at Mary then Tapi pipeline, it will carry 90 million metric cubic meters of gas per day once it is commissioned and the target date is 2020. Setback for socialism in Venezuela when the ruling party loses a majority and let us look at the events one by one. There is a historic climate deal. This historic climate deal was struck in Paris and the main points I would like to deal here and if you want much more please listen to the news analysis part of this week. We deliberated certain events pertaining to climate deal in the first part that is the 49th week news analysis and the balance we are going to discuss in 50th week news analysis and if you look at the important aspects of climate deal first and the foremost is it is first time in history that a single agreement was reached on climate change with the consensus of around 196 countries and most of the provisions though they are not legally enforceable but morally countries are bound to implement this climate deal because every country committed voluntarily to implement intended nationally determined contributions. So, it is a voluntary agreement and it is a morally binding agreement you can say. The second thing is all these nationally committed contributions will lead to 2 degree centigrade temperature rise in comparison to pre-industrial levels, but all endeavor will be made to limit the temperature to 1.5 degrees centigrade in comparison to pre-industrial levels. But I would like to remind you with the intended nationally determined contributions given by various countries, there is every possibility that the temperature raise may go up to 3.7 degrees centigrade in comparison to pre-industrial levels. But lot of further efforts are required to reduce it to 2 degree centigrade. Third important point is as per this agreement at some time between 2050 and 2100 amount of greenhouse gases emitted by human activity will be equal to the same levels as the trees oceans will absorb. That means provision of green cover will absorb carbon dioxide emissions and somewhere between 2050 to 2100 whatever carbon dioxide emissions or you can say greenhouse gas emissions we are releasing will be absorbed naturally by green cover oceans and forests right so that is third part and the fourth one is to review each country's contributions of cutting greenhouse gas emissions once in five years. That means whatever the contributions committed by the countries will be reviewed once in five years. The fifth point is rich countries will arrange climate finance to poorer countries. Because of temperature raise, poorer countries will be affected and developing nations have to make all the efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions 
that is known as mitigation there are three aspects one is mitigation mitigation means developing countries have to make all the efforts to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions for that they require finance they require money second thing is already certain changes took place in the climate and developing countries have to take care of the circumstances subsequent to already happened climate change that is called adaptation so first one is mitigation second one is adaptation and third least developed countries and you can say island countries are on the verge of damage because of climate change for that loss and damages are to be borne by developed countries so these three things require finance that is to be given by developed countries to developing countries the other important aspect is rich countries have to maintain 100 billion dollars a year funding beyond 2020 every year developed countries have to arrange 100 billion dollars funding to developing countries and least developed countries as climate finance and subsequently it is to be scaled up by 2025 so these are the main aspects and what are the pros and cons whether this deal will be implemented in true letter and spirit all these things we are going to discuss in news analysis please listen to news analysis part let us move on to the next event shinzo abe visited india for the third time during the first visit in 2007 his address of parliament was the confluence of the seas what is the meaning of confluence of the seas it is the confluence of indian ocean and pacific ocean or you can say indo pacific region he is visiting for the third time and 35 billion dollars was the investment committed by japan in the next 5 years when our prime minister visited japan recently and another important aspect is the joint naval exercises popularly known as the malabar between india japan and united states will become regular feature and delhi metro japan associated with the delhi metro by giving finance and similarly japan is expected to associate with bullet train projects in our country then india and japan are on the same platform when you look at the permanent membership in security council and at present 1200 japanese companies have got their presence in india and india is the strategic ally for japan because of the rise of china in the indo pacific region so with this background the japanese prime minister shinzo abe visited india and both the leaders addressed india japan business leaders forum and in this connection narendra modi emphasized on make in india became initiative or movement in japan and japan has lined up 12 billion dollars of investments for make in india as stated by our prime minister narendra modi and at the same time shri narendra modi stated that japan will import cars from india and he also stated during my visit to japan previously japanese investments committed war of the order of 35 billion dollars and in this connection japanese prime minister stated that india is attractive investment destination for japan and he praised the speed in implementation of policies in india and he also stated strong japan is good for india and strong india is good for japan and if you look at important aspects before going into important aspects two three things i would like to tell you one is honorary doctorate was given by jawaharlal nehru university to shinzo abe second is already partner city agreement exists between varanasi in india and kyoto in japan and both the leaders witnessed ganga aarti at varanasi and in this connection shinzo abe stated that a convention center will come up at varanasi with the japanese assistance and if you look at the important events first and the foremost is the bilateral maritime exercises previously regularly held between india and united states will become trilateral exercises from now onwards regularly that means from now onwards 
regularly this malabar exercises between india and us will also include japan regularly so far japan is participating in this malabar exercises not on regular feature but from now onwards india united states and japan all three will participate in the malabar joint exercises so as to ensure peace security freedom of navigation in indo pacific region this freedom of navigation assumed a lot of significance because of the reason china claims several islands in south china sea and this is the ploy of japan and us contain china in indo pacific region so now india japan and united states will have joint trilateral naval exercises basically to contain china in the indo pacific region because of several territorial disputes china had with its neighbors this assumed lot of strategic significance Second important point is defense ties reached high level when Japan stated that it will manufacture US2 amphibious aircraft. Please look into this picture. This is the picture of amphibious aircraft and from now onwards Japan will manufacture US2 amphibious aircraft and out of which 15 aircrafts will be purchased by India. and other important aspect is key defense agreements like transfer of defense equipment and technology were also signed and third important aspect is broad agreement for cooperation in civil nuclear energy was also reached but certain aspects like the legal legislative and expert level negotiations are to be concluded that's why it is not uh, announced but government to government clearance is given for civil nuclear energy agreement and it will become a formality within few months of time so these are three aspects or the important aspects of japan prime minister's visit and if you look at the event of this cooperation for bullet train project this is another important aspect where japan committed investment for first bullet train project in this country the first bullet train project is going to come up between mumbai and ahmedabad two important cities on the western side of the country and these two important cities are going to be connected with the first bullet train in this country and bullet train means it will have a maximum speed of around 350 km per hour and for this bullet train project shin consent technology will be used and japan agreed to give loan of around 12 billion dollars and please don't forget the total cost of this project is around 14.7 billion dollars and japan agreed to give loan of 12 billion dollars with the longest loan tenor of around 50 years second is there is a moratorium of 15 years on loan repayment that means for the first 15 years we need not pay back to japan that means loan repayment tenor of 50 years and out of 50 years 15 years we need not pay back and lowest interest rate of 0.1% and implementation period is 7 years and the supply of japanese technology items will constitute around 20 to 22% and this involves shin consent technology of japan so for this bullet train project japan came up with highly favorable terms for india probably with a view to take the bullet train market in this country because in future lot of bullet train projects will come up between metro cities right so this is another important development if you look at it one is major defense deals second is important bullet train project between mumbai ahmedabad third one is government to government and not for civil nuclear cooperation or you can say nuclear cooperation agreement and the fourth one is strategic partnership of combining japan into malabar exercises so these four are the major events and if you look at the visit of japanese prime minister and 
it is successful to the extent more defense cooperation government to government approval for civil nuclear energy deal more economic cooperation in the form of bullet train project and more initiatives towards make in india deal so if you look at economic and strategic cooperation it is a successful deal but if you look at the issue whether the relations between india and china will strain further that only time can say because china has got the territorial disputes with the several asian neighbors in south china sea not only that it has got a dispute with regard to senkaku island with japan in east china sea and in view of several disputes america with the help of japan philippines india australia wants to contain china strategically and in view of the joint military exercises of india japan and usa and also in view of more strategic cooperation between japan and india only time can say whether this will annoy china and whether the gap between india and china will widen further in due course of time only time can say if you look at economic perspective this is very good deal but if you look at the strategic perspective whether india is being dragged into the game plan of united states of america in view of china's rise in indo pacific region whether united states of america is using india as a ploy to control china in indo pacific region that only time can say but for the time being it is a good visit of japanese prime minister to india because of several economic and strategic deals right friends india and pakistan to start a comprehensive bilateral dialogue initially it was started as a composite dialogue subsequently resumed dialogue and now it is a comprehensive bilateral dialogue this is named as a comprehensive bilateral dialogue because of for some reasons india pakistan dialogue was stopped somewhere around august 2015 and subsequently when our prime minister visited paris for a climate deal indian prime minister discussed with nawaz sharif and subsequently national security advisor level talks were held in bangkok and now both the countries decided to start comprehensive bilateral dialogue in previous days several dialogues were held between these two countries but not much breakthrough but now this comprehensive bilateral dialogue will take place and foreign secretary level talks are planned in the month of january right so in this connection i would like to tell you the important aspects of this comprehensive dialogue this comprehensive bilateral dialogue involves 10 points i have listed here one is peace and security confidence building measures issues pertaining to jammu and kashmir uh, siachen ollar barrage or tulbul navigation project this uh, ollar barrage what pakistan calls tulbul navigation project what india calls is on jhelum river near sopor in jammu and kashmir there is a dispute between both the countries with regard to this uh, barrage and that is included in this 10 points then economic and commercial cooperation counter terrorism then humanitarian issues people to people exchanges and religious tourism these 10 points are included in the comprehensive bilateral dialogue which will resume from now onwards between india and pakistan i would like to tell you few points there is a clear change one is for the first time bilateral term is used previously pakistan was asking about a third party mediation but now for the first time this bilateral term is used and the joint statement says that eliminating terrorism another important aspect is in the joint statement it says eliminating terrorism the third point is it mentioned peace along the line of control the three important aspects as per the joint statement or first time this word bilateral was mentioned second is joint statement says elimination of terrorism third is for the first time peace along the line of control was mentioned 
and you may have a doubt why there is a sudden change in the pakistan strategy if at all it is true why there is a sudden shift in the strategy first and the foremost is pakistan is also the victim of terrorism all of you are well aware about the peshawar school incident where the several students lost their lives and pakistan recognized that it is the victim of terrorism second is Afghanistan in recent times blamed Pakistan for cross border terrorism previously india accused pakistan of cross border terrorism but now afghanistan is also accusing pakistan of cross border terrorism third important point is the pressure from international community because several countries are affected by terrorism terrorism is not confined to one particular region or one particular country because it spread its tentacles across the world several countries putting lot of pressure on pakistan to control terrorism so these three are the probable reasons if at all the pakistan's intentions are true and and for the first time it was named as comprehensive bilateral dialogue and two things one is here prime minister is nawaz sharif and the army chief is rahil sharif and the power is distributed or you can say there are two power centers in pakistan one is the government headed by the prime minister second is army chief so we have to see how the army will respond to the situation right friends important cabinet decisions first and the foremost is amendments to real estate regulation and development bill so far in our country we do not have any real estate regulatory authority several sectors have got regulators if you see insurance sector it has got insurance regulatory development authority of india if you look at telecom sector it has got regulator troy if you got banking system it has got regulator reserve bank of india but real estate sector has got no regulator till date now cabinet decided to have real estate regulatory authority second important point is in view of the crisis in pulses and please don't forget our production is around 17 to 18 million tons but our requirement is 22 million tons in recent times the pulses prices increased skyrocketed and in view of this the cabinet decided that the government will procure 150000 tons of pulses in kharif and rabi seasons put together and price stabilization fund will be used third important aspect is ship building and ship repair industry will come under make in india initiative and government will give budgetary support of around 4000 rupees crores during the next 10 years not only that mandatory use of jute in packaging industry is made the next one is grant of infrastructure status for ship building and ship repair industry and 106 additional waterways will be declared as national waterways so these are the decisions taken by the cabinet looking to the next one supreme court upheld panchayat law of haryana Supreme Court recently upheld Panchayat Law of Haryana Haryana Panchayat Law stipulates minimum educational qualification to contest for panchayat posts 10th class 8th class 5th class was stipulated for different categories and around 45% of the population will become ineligible for contesting in the panchayat raj elections because of this law because of the last stipulated by haryana around 45% of the population will become ineligible for contesting panchayat raj elections not only that more than 50% scheduled caste people will become ineligible for contesting the panchayat raj elections under these circumstances the matter went to supreme court and supreme court supported the haryana panchayat law but there are several pertinent questions which are yet to be answered the first and the foremost is why there is no minimum educational qualification for mps and mlas who are representing much wider area of lakhs of population second important point is the state government has got power to make laws under article 243 but it should not be detrimental to basic foundation of democracy and our basic tenets of democracy is the universal franchise and there is no bar for contesting in the posts of mps and mlas and at the same time why educational qualification is prescribed for contesting panchayat elections which represents hardly few hundred or few thousand people 
and does it not violate the spirit of 73rd and 74th constitution amendments which were brought in 90s to strengthen panchayat raj institutions and does it not against article 25 of united nations international convention or international covenant on civil and political rights as india is also signatory because it leads to exclusion of certain people the panchayat law in haryana will exclude certain people for contesting in panchayat elections does it not against the equality so these are the questions common man is asking and supreme court should review their decision keeping in view the basic tenets of democracy in our country look into the next one chennai what are the structural problems we have discussed certain things last week and tambaram near chennai recorded highest rainfall of 490 mm on december 1 and what went wrong with chennai if you look at it there are several structural problems or structural deficiencies in chennai one is it infrastructure in recent times came up on low lying swampy lands second important aspect is in 1801 itself british government recommended interlinking or integration of adyar and kuvam rivers with buckingham canal not much action was taken subsequently and madras was transformed into metropolis not only changing its name to chennai but also it transformed to metropolis without giving much thought to this another important point is mismanagement of releasing water from chambrambakkam reservoir and disaster management plan is missing altogether for this metropolis and this is the case with any city in our country if you look at how the floods were managed in chennai and it is more than anything else the resilience of people and helping each other in times of calamities which saved the day for chennai and at the same time army coast guard national disaster response force were pressed into service without much delay but not much coordination between state government and these the forces heavy rainfall was predicted well in advance but things were messed up by release of water from chambarambakkam to coincide with heavy rainfall why the chambarambakkam lake was kept up to full reservoir level during the periods of heavy rains these are the questions which there are no answers and let us hope chennai to recover fast if you look at the events around the world most important is the tapi pipeline tapi pipeline is expected to carry natural gas from turkmenistan to india passing through afghanistan pakistan and this is 1735 kilometers long approximate cost is 10 billion dollars and some newspapers quoted 7 to 8 billion dollars don't take figures as sacrosanct and this was conceived long back in 1995 and india joined subsequently asian development bank came forward to finance this project and our vice president hamid ansari visited the place meri in turkmenistan for the foundation stone laying ceremony or ground breaking ceremony and this project could not take off for the past several years due to gas price negotiation and at the same time security issues in afghanistan and pakistan it is expected to carry 90 million standard cubic meters of gas per day and if you look at uh, salient features of this project ground breaking ceremony was held at meri around 300 kilometers from the turkmenistan capital ashgabat then it carries from galkinsh gas field this is the second largest gas field in the world Turkmenistan has got world's fourth largest natural gas reserves and it will take care of 25% of Pakistan's total energy needs and another important aspect is it passes through terror hit regions of Afghanistan and Pakistan that is going to be the real challenge the real challenge is how to execute this project which passes through terror hit regions of afghanistan and pakistan and if you look at the last event setback for socialism in venezuela venezuela is the showpiece of uh, socialism is into problems for the first time in 16 years 
the ruling socialist party lost the majority in congress the opposition party democratic unity round table got 99 out of 167 seats and the socialist party got only 46 this is for the first time ruling socialist government lost control in congress for the past 16 years the basic reason is the fall in oil prices this is one more country where the effect of oil prices hit badly the economy is going to contract by around 10% this year and there is a scarcity of essential items and inflation increased by around 100% in 2015 and under the circumstances people voted for the opposition party so now the days of socialism in this country are also numbered it appears and the so called world popular policies of nicolas maduro are under test in view of the loss of majority in congress and let us see how he will steer the economy in the oncoming days right it is a big challenge fall in oil prices posed a big challenge to nicolas maduro in venezuela and please don't forget venezuela is uh, the country in south america right friends with this let us conclude and uh, please to join for news analysis where we are going to discuss uh, climate change part 2 right friends have a nice day thank you